This is Jerry Hash, and this is part two of the presentation on midfoot rigidity from an inferior fibular fixation causing sesamoid pain. I'm Jerry Hash from the Hash Institute, spell H E S C H. Our website is www.hashinstitute.com. We do consultation and treatment for complex pain syndromes. We also uh, teach seminars and distance learning to hands on clinicians. And, uh, I have just finished treating this person and we restored superior glide mobility of the fibula which then allowed me to actually mobilize the talus posteriorly and gain some more dorsiflexion. She now dorsiflexes to about 15 degrees whereas before she was restricted at 5 degrees in spite of efforts to mobilize it. And the midfoot is, is much less rigid now. Uh, looking straight down, which you may not see with the camera, I can easily get 25 degrees in the, in, in the forefoot. And at end range of pronation of the midfoot, there's some nice give there, and there's some nice inferior give also on the midfoot, uh, emphasizing primarily the uh, navicular, but the cuboids and navic and, uh, sorry, the cuneiforms and the cuboid follow that as well. So she's going to weight bear a lot more normatively on those sesamoids rather than, than hitting the, the medial border and pushing the sesamoid more laterally. She now has a lot more midfoot mobility and therefore has a lot more forefoot mobility and she'll plant down more normatively. And this mobility gain is bilateral and there's the inferior mobility that she didn't have and her dorsiflexion is much better. So she's been laying on the table. How would you like to stand up and walk around and just give us any feedback, okay? Okay. So come and walk out here, please. And we'll keep her face out of the film. Yeah, I can, I can tell. It's definitely more comfortable to walk barefoot and have been. I usually do not walk barefoot, haven't in a few years. In fact, I always have to have shoes on walking around just the house. So my hope is that there's less shearing, less medial to lateral shearing on the, on the forefoot, on the sesamoids, but can you describe how it's different? What, what does it feel like it's doing? What, is, what are the feet doing when you walk? What are they doing? Um, <laughs> I don't know, I just feel like they're more planted on the floor. I can feel every part of my foot. So oh, really. there's more of the foot on the ground. Is that what you're telling me? Mm -hmm. There's more content. Right. That and is congruent with everything I said. Exactly. And um, before I was um, uh, timid about certain parts of my feet to touch the ground. Uh -huh. It just didn't feel right. Okay. And now it, it just... I don't know. It just feels more stable. Nice, nice. Yeah. Um, can you keep walking and change, move your awareness to the hips? Do you feel like there's anything different going on in the hip joints? They feel more relaxed. They feel like they can move in different directions than, I, I, than before. I think your hips are more normative. They're more relaxed. They don't have to compensate for the feet. I think you were making contact, you know, yeah, on the... I don't feel so restricted my hips. Yeah, I think previously they had to compensate to try to get you to make more contact on the ground with your feet. Okay. Now that the feet can make more contact on their own, I think the hips are more free to be uh, relaxed, to be more normative throughout each phase of gait. Is that... Yeah, is that, that, sounds, that sounds correct. Okay, so um, this is good, so we'll stop filming here.